Hi, I'm Mitch, and welcome to the Restoration Road. My guests today are Michelle and Jensen Snyder. Michelle has been through so much in the last few years that has inspired her daughter Jensen to write music and to bring it to people who are hurting. And what God is doing with this is absolutely amazing. Jensen, I feel like I'm part of your singing career. I used to yeah. introduce you when you'd sing the national anthem at Lakewood in probably fifth grade. Is that when you started or did you start earlier? Yeah, I think so. I think singing the national anthem was probably sixth grade, maybe. And I'd say, follow her on YouTube, <laughs> iTunes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I just loved it. I just couldn't believe that we had that kind of talent <laughs> hanging around. She loved hearing that. <laughs> um, I'm so excited about how your career is continuing to take mm -hmm. off but I bet there's going to be this huge explosion at some point, and we're going to look back at this and think, wow, <laughs> I knew her back then. I hope. <laughs> um, when did you know you could sing? Like, you know, every, every girl probably sings to Taylor Swift songs and stuff like that, but when did you know there was something a little more in there? I never really, and I still don't like to listen to myself sing. What? Really, ever. <laughs> because She's I can see, worst yeah, I can see everything that I did wrong. But in first grade, my music teacher told my parents that I had a good singing voice, and I joined the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. Tell me about the Fort Wayne Children's Choir. So I've been with them for eight, eight years, years now. She started in first grade. I got to start early. And did you get vocal training and lessons along the way? They really, they give you music theory lessons. We get to sing all different types of languages. No And kidding. I love that. Mm -hmm. And it's wow. like a little family. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to talk about this inspiration beside you. <laughs> uh, Michelle, you've uh, been through a lot in a very short period of time. Let's talk about uh, how all that unfolded. Um, I think you, you thought you had a cold that was lingering, right? Exactly, yes. My husband and, and my best friend kept saying, you need to just go to the doctor. You've got that cough that's driving everyone crazy. Just make sure you don't have walking you know, pneumonia or yeah, something. Yeah. Like, finally, I went down and did it. And um, I did. I, I only had bronchitis. I truly did just have bronchitis. They gave me a Z-pack. You said, you know, see, I told you so. Yeah. But um, while I was there, I, I mean, I'm very blessed to have a wonderful family doctor. And he um, was checking everything over, and he and he heard a very strong heart murmur that he just hadn't ever noticed before. And um, he said, I just want to send you over for an echo just to double check that. And you had never had a history of that that you knew of? Like, you know, um, sometimes when you're a kid, they'll say, oh, you got a little bit of a heart, nothing like that? I was born with a heart murmur, but it went away. Okay. So yeah, throughout my life, nothing had ever been picked of it. So, which is, that's actually quite common, you know, those things seal up, you know, and mm -hmm. um, so no, it never been brought up again. So, um, so yeah. it tells you you have one. And yeah, and I went over and um, the next day they scheduled me for an echo um, and I had that done and sent me out home. And then the next day, um, my doctor called me and my doctor never calls me. Mm -hmm. So it was, I mean, it was actually him mm -hmm. and he said, Michelle, I got your echocardiogram back, and um, you have uh, bicuspid aortic valve disease. Did you and know what that was? I had no clue. No, I, I was know. just like, okay. And? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and then he he just proceeded to tell me um, that he's got me set up with a cardiologist um, for next week. Um now, how are you feeling at that moment? Is this like I, blowing your mind? You you got your Z back. It was complete fog. Yeah. I, I, none of that, what he told me, even, I was still just kind of okay. Mm -hmm. I, nothing had set in at all yet. Um, mm. And then until I met, I guess it was just a couple days later when I met with the cardiologist. And then I really started hearing what's going on. Then it was like, whoa. Mm. Um and what was it? Well, um, when you're uh, bicuspid, you are actually born with it. I was born that way. Never knew it. It played out exactly like it was supposed to play out because then by the time you're in your 40s, around that age, your, um, your valves start overworking themselves um, and building up like 
um, cal- uh, cal- they get calcified. Mm-hmm. And basically what was happening is my aortic valve was leaking mm-hmm. and it needed to be replaced. Yeah, my dad had that. Um, and it, so the older you get, it, it gets to the point where, yes, you do start having symptoms. But I will tell you, I didn't have symptoms either. Mm. I really, you know, you're, the shortness of breath and and um, things like that that you get. I'm a very active person. I'm a crazy realtor, running kids, and life is always hectic. So I don't think I ever picked up on anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yes, I went to the cardiologist. They told me this is you have bicuspid aortic valve disease. They told me what it was. And they proceeded on then sending me to more tests, like a chest CT and um, with dye. And that's when then I get told I have an aneurysm on my aorta root. (laughs) It's just like, okay. Um, And this is really like out of nowhere. Yeah, I I literally went in because I had a, a head cold. It was a blessing to have bronchitis. Yeah. And it was a blessing to have an amazing doctor that checked me out a little bit more and heard that heart murmur and cared enough to just have it looked at. Um, because bicuspid aortic valve disease, um, if, if you remember, like, you know, people know John Ritter, yes. that's exactly what he had. That's how he passed away suddenly. Mm. Um, he had, he was bicuspid. He had, um, the aneurysm, which is common. Mm-hmm. It grows from that. And his aneurysm burst. Um, a lot of times you'll hear about athletes. Yes. Um, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not, it's, it's, you know, they say these heart diseases are silent diseases and it is one. So I was lucky enough to find out um, because I was, a, I mean, there's no way to fix this other than open heart surgery and replacing that valve um, and mm-hmm. fixing that aneurysm. Mm. So, yeah. What's going on inside you as all this unfolds in a matter of weeks? At that time when she told us, she just, it was like, I thought I was going to lose my mom. Mm-hmm. Because of everything that she said, it was like, your heart is very important. So when I heard about all that, I was just like, am I going to even have my mom? Like at all? Or is am I just going to lose her? Did your prayers change? to kind of focus on that most of the time? Yeah, very much. And um, could you sense anything from God? Any comforting or did he bring other people in your life? I know that that in these moments when I feel like he's not there, it's just because he's carrying me. But at that time I doubted God because I I thought- that's normal. I thought I loved my mom so much. And why would he do this to my family? Like, I thought I did something wrong and that he was punishing me Mm. and my family. Mm. And so I just doubted him and everything. Yeah. Um, I heard a great message a pastor gave one time on doubt versus, I think he said disbelief instead of unbelief, so it was two D words. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But doubting is normal, and it actually will bring you closer to God Mm -hmm. because you end up pursuing what is this doubt, what is this uneasiness in me and uh, versus, you know, rejecting God. Mm-hmm. And so that's, uh, that's very authentic and transparent of you. Were you writing music at the time yet? Mm-mm. No? Oh, my. She journals. She's always journaled I a write, lot. I write down Her, a lot, all of my thoughts. Yeah. Just to get them out. Mm. It helps. That's really cool. So this isn't the only challenge that's going on in her life and your life. Can you describe what else was happening? It, it was kind of a, a chronological order of things. My, my mom, her grandma, had battled breast cancer. Um, and we kind of got through that. You know, that was a shock and a big thing and a big scary thing mm-hmm. um, for us. And then so mom battled that, and we were with her every step of the way. I was with her at every chemo um, appointment she had. And then... Um, then we lost my dad. We lost her grandpa. Um, and that happened about six months prior to when I found out about my, um, my heart. Um, and Jensen was very close to her grandpa. Um, she's, she's the only granddaughter. So, um, 
Yeah, so she was real close to grandpa. So, you know, dealing with my mom going through um, breast cancer and then losing dad, and we were just kind of getting back on, you know, back to normalcy. And, and then we kind of got socked with me out of nowhere. Mm. So that was kind of like the third thing in the chain. <laughs> and Jensen, you're 9, 10, 11 through this season? Mm -hmm. I'm 9, 10. And so yeah. losing your grandfather, watching your grandmother almost go to the other side, and now your mom's got this, I see why it's so heavy on you Yeah. that you might lose your mom. Yeah. Well, what do the cardiologists recommend you do? Um, open heart surgery. So. Oh, my. Yeah. I um. I, that was my next um, appointment was meeting with a surgeon. Um, and my husband and I went, um, and we were still, I'm t it was still kind of like, you mm -hmm. know, it still wasn't all clicking mm -hmm. with what was going on. And I will tell you, I, it, um, the first couple days, I, I was in a bad place. I really just like mad, like what in the world? I no, I don't have time for this. I've got two young kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, this can't happen, mm -hmm. you know? So there, there You're pretty task-oriented, right? I, uh, yeah, okay. I am. Okay. I am. <laughs> and um, so I had that going on in me, battling, and uh, um, I just anger. I, I was mad. I was mad at God. And um, and I'm telling you, I, I, it was about the second night after I had met with the cardiologist, and it was actually before I met with the surgeon even, but I went to bed and I prayed, and I woke up that next morning, and I was kind of like, okay, if this, God, if this is what you're giving me, then let's go do this. Um, I'm up for the challenge. Wow. And um, then we met with uh, my surgeon, and. And we were going to get a second opinion. Um, I had actually, I had gotten mm. on the phone. I mean, I'm, you know, on the internet looking up all this stuff. And I had actually made an appointment with Cleveland Clinic mm. um, to get a second opinion. Um, but then we met with um, the surgeon at Parkview at the Heart Institute, Dr. Lloyd, and he was amazing. I mean, and he spent over two hours um, with my husband and I, and he answered every one of our questions. Um, he was just calm. That's remarkable. And we both felt so comfortable with him um, that I canceled um, mm. my appointment with Cleveland. And I just felt, I really felt at peace. I felt like, okay, I, God, I know I'm one of your warriors, and I'm up for this battle, and let's do this. So, so do you think peace came from the prayer that night before the, the appointment? I have to believe yeah, that was the last thing I did <laughs> before I fell asleep, and I felt different the next morning. So I have, yeah. That's pretty cool. I do. So how long until your surgery after that two-hour uh, conversation with the surgeon? Well, this was in November, um, and I ended up having my surgery on February 12th, which does seem like a couple months later. Um, <laughs> but I had a cruise in January. <laughs> Are you good to go on it or no? <laughs> okay, no. You, have, you got everything planned out, don't you? Oh my gosh. I had a cruise with, we had a cruise booked with a whole bunch, a big group of us, like 20 some people are friends. And I'm like, doctor, am I allowed to go on this cruise? Or, I mean, if, if I have to have surgery, then, you know, I understand. Does it have to be done now or can it be done? <laughs> <laughs> get back and he said as long as I didn't zip line or do um <laughs> scuba diving um I just had to relax by the pool and chill out I was okay to I was like I can I can do that that's oh, exactly yes. what I want to do you know what so. I'd start asking is well what about March what about April what about May <laughs> I'd, I'd find out how long we can chill and relax before we do it but see I the thing with me is that I just wanted to get I knew with when you're bicuspid, there's no way to fix it till you have surgery. So it just continually gets worse. 
And I know a lot of people in my position will wait. They'll wait till that aneurysm gets mm. to a certain amount, till the last, but I like, I don't want to wait and mm -hmm. I don't want to be restricted, mm -hmm. you know? So, okay. So literally we got back from the cruise on a Saturday. Um, I went in on Monday. I had to have a heart catheterization. Is that then, painful or anything? Is the heart catheterization mm -hmm. is a little discomforting, okay. but I had the bru a bruise the size of a football. I, I was proud of. Yeah. I <laughs> but, um, so you have that, and then what happened? Yeah, and then like three days later, I had open heart surgery. Okay, so <laughs> do you go with her to the hospital mm -mm. for the open heart surgery? I stayed, stayed back home. Um, describe that day, uh, what that feels like to you, and what's going on in your relationship with God, because this is probably the first time in your life you've ever had something this serious, and it's you, and you're young. Um, what's that day like? That day, uh, it was scary. Um, I really stayed strong and I was trying to stay so, so strong around the kids. And I will tell you, um, they, they had, their teachers were wonderful. I knew their classes and teachers were praying, mm. um, for me. Um, and they, they reached out to me, you know, assuring me, don't, you know, don't worry, you know, we're mm -hmm. really keeping an eye on them and, mm. and, um, um, so I knew that they had a lot of support and, and, you know, mommy was trying to stay really strong for them. Um, but yet the night before they did go to, um, to spend the night at their grandparents for a couple of days. I did not. And, and the doctor told me that that first day I was going to, when I came out of surgery, I was going to look, I wasn't going to look like mm -hmm. mommy looks. Right. And, um, uh, which is from what I'm told is pretty true. It was pretty gruesome. So it, it was a couple of days later. I was still in ICU, but then um, Troy brought the kids in to, on to see. On Valentine's Day. Yeah, it was on val. Yeah, I had my surgery on February 12th and they came in on Valentine's Day. What'd you think yes. when you went in? She still didn't look like herself. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing my dad after his aortic valve was replaced in a bypass. And when you walk in there after the surgery for the first time, let alone two days later, Oh my goodness, you think, how can I recover from this? She just didn't look like herself because she had tubes coming out right here and she has a big scar right down her ribs. She just didn't look like herself at all. Now, can you communicate at that time okay? And talk a little bit? And, yeah. And are they yeah. doing that deal where they're pushing on your chest with the pillow <laughs> and making you breathe? And Awful. That's like horrible pain, it's right? The most, yeah, that's the most horrible pain, honestly, I've ever felt in my life was breathing in that. Mm-hmm. And yes. it's to help you not get pneumonia, right? Yes. That's, that's the keep whole your, purpose of the pain. It's to keep your lungs cleared because that is a big, big fear after open heart surgery. Yes. And and so what's recovery like? Do you have to um, kind of rehab for a couple weeks there or do you get sent home before that? I was in the hospital for six days mm. and then um, I was sent home and then I had um, where they send a nurse out um, to check on you, I think it was twice a week, and did mm -hmm. all um, my vitals and stuff. Um, I will say, I was at a closing two weeks after surgery. Get out of here. And she's I'm, doing real estate in the hospital. Well, she's never going to die. I, she's just going to go out of commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to be driven around for several weeks. That's but, amazing. But um, That is amazing. So you hit the ground running in your recovery. You just come back, I start did. doing business. And... I, I did go through, um, yeah, I was back on my laptop and, you know, I, I couldn't drive for, um, it was six weeks. Um, I was on um, pain medicine for several weeks. Um, pretty, pretty strong. Um, but I have a great office that works as a team and they really backed me up and, but I was able to make phone calls and get on my laptop. And mm. so, yeah, I, I got back in the swing of things. So Jensen, about this time, you're starting to be inspired to write a song or songs? It was really a year or two afterwards when I started thinking about like my feelings through it because at that time I didn't really even think about writing songs. It was more like I was just thinking about my mom mm -hmm. and if I was gonna have her. And I was so thankful that I still had her. Mm -hmm. And it was like two years later when I was really thinking about it and trying to get into writing songs, I was like, what do I want to write a song about? 
and this, my mom's heart surgery and like the journey through my faith and growing so much closer to God just always came up in my mind. And what was the song? What was the first song you wrote? Railroad. Railroad. And um, you've also been inspired by things that you've seen in school. I think bullying was one of them. Can yes, you describe that's the scenario around one. that? Yeah, I got bullied quite a bit. Um, and it just really set this thing on my heart to want to write songs that inspire people because I got made fun of for my looks and like my outward appearance and sometimes even tr for just being me. And I think that everybody should be themselves yep. and not ever try to hide who they truly are and not ever be self-conscious about themselves. And I catch myself still sometimes today looking in the mirror and not feeling like beautiful how God made me. And I have to stop myself because I know that God made me the way he wanted to make me. And when I'm saying that I'm not beautiful, I'm saying God messed up. And Amen. God Don't you ever do that. forget that. <laughs> There's no reason you should have ever been bullied, no reason you should ever be concerned about that image. You're beautiful. <laughs> and it comes from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be a Proverbs 31 woman all the way. Mm -hmm. um, what song did you write about out of that experience? I wrote Pretty, and mm. it kind of says it in the title. But my favorite part is the chorus where it says, those pretty girls wouldn't be so pretty because it was definitely the popular girls who were pretty and they had it all together and they just acted perfect and pretty. And they were the ones that would make fun of me and just say very deteriorating things that they said to me. Uh, it shouldn't, but it just shocks me. Um, and if I had four girls, you know. Um, <laughs> what caused you to decide to lose 68 pounds in one year? Well, honestly, my, my weight's been an issue I've battled all my life. Really? Yeah. Oh, I never every, thought about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just, I mean, it's it's been an up and down thing since I was, you know, at probably fifth, sixth grade, I can remember, you know. So um, it's just been one of those things that I try to all everything and I've succeeded and then you gain it back and more. And I was just saying yesterday that at 47 years old, oh gosh, I said that on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody was but thinking a lot younger. I feel better than I did when I was in my 20s. And I even, even going through what I did through heart surgery, this weight battle has been a whole nother thing. Um, but I am finally at the point, and, I, and actually I'm a health coach now too, which never in my life did I think I would be. But I'm telling you, God, God blessed me with this, and he finally um, gave me a strong mind um, through this journey. I'm, I, through discipline and, and this journey of weight loss, that I finally feel like I've succeeded and come out with a clear mind, I, I feel closer to God um, now than I ever have before because I feel like I've served I've served Him. I mean, He gave us, our, our bodies are supposed to be a temple mm -hmm. um, that we take care of. And I have not taken care of, you know, I have for short periods, but I haven't um, honored my body the way I'm, I'm supposed to for Him. And I truly feel, for the first time in my life, I'm there. That's and, awesome. And now I, I'm blessed that I can, I can share this. I've got friends, you know, doing the same thing. I've got family members, my mom and my aunt and cousin, and it's just awesome. And it, is it an eating plan? A it new, is. A new lifestyle yep. way of eating? Yep. That's awesome. You're a picture of success, and uh, it's awesome how God has blessed you with health, how that cold led to uh, where you are today and the wisdom of the doctors. It's just awesome and how you're in God's hands, and I'm so excited and eager to see what God's going to do with your singing career. Mm -hmm. Since you're here, could we uh, have you grab your guitar and maybe you do a song for us? Yeah, What totally. song would you do? Polaroid. All right, let's do Polaroid. And this is written from a school experience as well? Yeah is actually from my friend. 
to just encourage her. Beautiful. Sandy blonde hair, and I don't care who stares. Please judge me for being me. I'll accept apologies when you leave. But don't forget it, cause you'll regret it if you never have a smile. Every picture that we stopped to take every Polaroid and memory made was a moment we realized it's real. Every standard that we finally met made new we could never get, but at least the low will always feel us still. Smiles and laughs a little bit about any evil thought and sour Cause I'll never forget the good in you Oh, in you I don't run, don't hide We all love you still The picture Take every Polaroid and memory made was a moment we realized the thrill. Every standard that we finally met made a new one we could never get, but at least the hope will always fill us still. million downloads and you heard it here first. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you. So Hi, I'm Sarah Westfall. Join us next week for another episode of The Restoration Road. She's awesome. <laughs>